First thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the hip and do the hip exam. First, we're going to ask the patient if they have any pain anywhere, and we want to make sure to check anteriorly, laterally, and posteriorly. So along the groin, on the side, and near the butt area. Now we are going to go ahead and take a look at special tests to be able to identify what the injury is. The first test we're going to do is the log roll test. This is going to be good if we suspect a hip fracture. And what you want to do is just roll the leg back and forth. Another thing you can do is a compression test. You have them fully extend their leg. Go ahead and lift their leg up. Bump the bottom to determine if they have a fracture. Or go ahead and tap the knee. And then lastly, laterally, to make, make sure there's no fracture going on. If all of that turns out negative, what you can do is go ahead and proceed to range of motion by bending the knee and moving it into internal and external rotation. If there's pain, that could indicate pathology. And then you can move the limb into extreme range of motion and if they have pain, it could indicate a labral injury. For piriformis syndrome, we want to fully flex the leg to 90 degrees. And if it causes pain in the buttocks area, that will be a positive test. In order to stretch it, I'm going to go ahead and bend your knee and move it inward. And this will go ahead and stretch the area. If there's still pain, that would be a positive test. Now we're going to go ahead and look at the knee exam. We're going to look at the ligaments and meniscus, test those to see if there's any tears. First thing we're going to do is we're going to test by the, doing the anterior drawer test. We're going to have the patient bend their knee and push out with both hands. And notice if there's any laxity on both sides. Then what we can do is go ahead and do the Lachman's test, which also determines ACL injury, um, which we're gonna go ahead and hold the tibia and try to pull it forward on both sides. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the posterior drawer test. Um, this is where we just go ahead and push down on the tibia. Again, noticing if there's any laxity and then lastly, we're going to go ahead and do the posterior sag sign. Um, for the posterior sag test, we're going to go ahead and look at the tibias and notice if one tibia is more prominent than the other. If so, that would be a positive test. Next, we're going to palpate the medial collateral ligament and the lateral collateral ligament to see if there's any tenderness. To stress the MCL, we're going to put the leg at 0 degrees and at 30 degrees of knee flexion to look for any laxity. And then to look at the LCL, we're going to again do 0 degrees and do a valgus stress test and then again at 90 degrees. For menisci, to check for a menisci tear, we're going to go ahead and do a compressing and twisting motion on the knee. To check for any laxity. And then go ahead and lay on your stomach. In order to stress the meniscus more and determine injury, we'll go ahead and do the same thing for the lateral and the medial. Now we're going to go ahead and do a Thessaly's test. What I'm going to have you do is go ahead and go weight bearing on one leg and squat a little bit. I'm going to just turn you inward and outward. And this is going to go ahead and determine if there's any meniscus pain. What we can also have them do is do duck waddling. So duck waddling. And this is going to go ahead and be useful for any uh, posterior aspect on both menisci to, to determine any pain. 
Now we're gonna go ahead and look for anterior knee pain. First, we're gonna do a Clark's test. We're gonna have them flex their knee. Go ahead and lay down. I'm gonna have you flex your knee, or like flex, like go ahead and extend fully, and I'm gonna try to push down and relax and flex. For this one, if you go ahead and resist upward motion of the patella, that is how you do the Clark's test. If there's any pain, that would be a positive test. Now we can go ahead and palpate the patella tendon on the lateral and the medial side. For patella tendinopathy, um, usually is in the insertion of the patella or the superior inferior part. And there will be pain on both sides. That would be impingement of Hofa's fat pad. Now we're gonna go ahead and look for patella bursitis. For this, you just wanna go ahead and look for any tenderness. For Baker's cyst, you wanna go ahead and feel for any masses on the leg. Um, then to do, go ahead and test for effusion on the knee, we're gonna test by moving the thigh downward. And then feeling the kneecap for any tenderness or pain. Second test is the medial bulge test. Um, we're gonna go ahead and push fluid down, up and back down. And looking for any fluid bulge. Next would be osteoarthritis, tender, medial and lateral joint line or deformity of the knee, as well as look for any muscle hypertrophy. For a stress fracture of the tibia, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and just palpate the whole tibia, mostly on the medial side, looking for any tenderness. And you can go ahead and do a percussion test in order to reproduce any of the pain. Uh, and the pain should radiate, radiate up the leg. Next, we can go ahead and look for a stress fracture by go ahead and going on a single leg and hopping. And this can go ahead and reproduce any of the pain. Now we are gonna go ahead and test the hamstrings. So go ahead and lay on your stomach. Go ahead and keep your thigh on the ground and bring your leg up. Um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and try to push your leg down. Don't let me push it down. Okay, good. If the hamstring was weak, the leg would just automatically go straight down. Now we're gonna go ahead and test the adductors. In order to do this, I'm gonna have you put your legs straight out and keep them in the air. I'm gonna try to pull your legs apart, but don't let me pull them apart. Good. If the patient had weak adductors, um, their legs would have just gone straight out. 